No, just just no. Wow. What the fuck, Edward? <laughs> okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Friedel. I'm Edward. And we are two geeks currently on separate couches due to germs. Everybody's okay. We are doing our due diligence to keep each other safe. Yes. So separate couches. Hopefully same couch soon hopefully same couch real soon yes anyway edward what are we watching tonight we are watching dun, 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 dun. perfect blue perfect blue 97 psychological thriller recommended to us by our lovely lovely patrons for our um overseas horror movie series this is the last one okay in this series so yeah neither of us have seen this movie and neither of us know anything about it and this I know is the zero first, things. first anime on this channel yeah excited me too i think we can just dive right in i you know i don't know what there is to say about it if we haven't if we don't know anything about it do you, I, I do you have i would really love to know do you have any like profound relationship with anime or how does anime fit into your media experiences or cartoons? honestly yeah honestly i don't there have been some that i've seen that i've liked but i'm not super attached to it mm -hmm. i don't seek it out normally I'm trying to think of the ones i've seen i think i've seen the like super popular ones like akira and ghost in the shell right mm -hmm. um, does cowboy bebop count as anime sure i think yeah, so like you know like that's kind of that's kind of it right like so have you seen the miyazaki films oh well yeah i've seen some of them i've seen princess mononoke uh-huh castle in the sky and i think i've seen one other one and they're amazing and i always want to watch more and i just don't i just don't ever think about it right it's not a genre that sort of magnetizes you no it, it just never has been one of our kids is super into it neat okay so as he gets older i'm sure that we'll like meet in the middle on that and watch more of those films yeah. Mm -hmm. the awesome. Not this one. <laughs> Not this one. Audience, let us know if you are an anime fan and what your favorite anime film is, even if it's not a horror film. And also let us know what you what you think about anime horror as a genre. Yeah, I Give know there are some, thoughts. right? Like Death Note is one. And I've seen the live action version of that. I haven't seen the, the anime version. I haven't either. So I'm curious, curious to know what, what what anime, if we ever, you know, if we ever circle back around to watching more anime, what anime would you like us to watch and react to on the couch? On the couch. There's a flat screen TV surround sound, a bevy of Blu-ray anime. Side quest anime. Side quest anime. <laughs> this is, like I said, this is recommended to us from our Patreons. They, uh, some of the movies in our series will be if you'd like to have a hand in that go check out our our patreon you can also watch our exclusive patreon only watch along for train to busan it's a little bit different than our normal stuff because of some technical difficulties but it is there and you can go watch it and we thank you for any support you give us if you want to so support us to... patreon's an option <laughs> or just or just you know hit the subscribe button and and give us a like Ring that notification bell. And thank you so much for watching. We're excited to have you all. Yes. At whatever engagement level you feel comfortable at. Getting, getting sketchy vibes from that guy. Dramatized by trains and apartment buildings. That fish tank is haunted. It seems like a truncated grieving process, but whatever. I do not want a fax machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This should be like the what you watch when you need to learn how to use the internet. Ultra creepy. Well, 
No. Just just no. Oh, this is gonna go bad places. Go what Whoa. Your fishies are dead. Those are ex fishies. What the fuck, Edward? What the fuck? Wow. I say again, what the fuck, Edward? <laughs> bye bye. Mima, do you start to know? She got the dinner, and I know. I want to talk to you. Definitely not watching this one with the kid. What the fuck, Friedel? Yeah. What is happening? <laughs> I can't keep track of the threads of fucked up in this movie anymore. This is I, I love the commentary on the film industry. I think that that was really complex and nuanced and a really important thing that I don't think I've ever seen anywhere before, which is that even fake rape is traumatizing. Yes, right. right. And especially in the places where women are coerced by a society of the spectacle to stay relevant through replicating real world Yes. in the arena of the spectacle so it is it is treated rape on screen is treated as a simulacra but it is still traumatizing yes i as a non-male growing up in toxic masculinity rape culture and the patriarchy still finds it a traumatizing experience to watch it even in the context of a cartoon. Yes, that was really difficult to watch, even in the context of a cartoon. Both sequences. There was one right. that was 
hinted at as being more real. There was one that was in the context of the show, but also felt very real. Yeah. Because there are still elements of coercion that are happening. Yeah. And the men are like very gaslighty about it, right? The producers are like, whatever. It's just, you know, the way it is and whatever. Just a scene. And it's just how you become an actress. And it's just what you have to do. It's such bullshit. Right, but it obviously had an intense effect on her. Yeah. Whether you believe the reality that says that that happened in a TV show or you believe the reality that says that she has multiple personalities as a way of dealing with the fact that that really happened to her. Either way, that was the catalyst for her psychotic break. Well, and maybe I'm reading this incorrectly because I'm still processing the film. <laughs> but This is a hard a lot... one to just turn around and talk about. Yeah. Yes. But it seems like a lot of her psychotic episodes and the polarization of her personality mirrors external pressure that is polarized and represented by her stalker and then by all of the other pressures that she feels to to become different than a pop idol to stay relevant to be important to be an actress right where like also different aspects of misogyny right where you have you have the stalker who is sort of dedicated to this idea of idolizing her as a as a moment in time that is about purity right mm. and then and how how he believes that what he's doing is defending the the realness of her defending yes. the purity of her defending yeah the, even though he took advantage of her too at the right. end yeah yes i mean and then you have the layering of like there's yeah. a lot there's a lot like There's donkey and shrek would say right like yeah a lot, then, of, a lot of layers in this onion <laughs> is she or is she not murdering people at some point like i started to wonder if she was if one of her personalities was the stalker and they mm -hmm. kind of like give a visual clue to that towards the end where where like the roomy persona's face looks like the stalker's face the eyes like mm -hmm really wide and and i was like i this needs at least another watch or two before i could even begin to seriously process what the hell i just watched right because the thread <laughs> around roomy was was kind was really subtle until yeah. the end where i don't know if you remember or not but like roomy is having a conversation with the other agent and the other agent says we are no longer in a time where where people like roomy can be pop stars and he is referencing her right and so in my mind at some point roomy was also a pop star and probably probably had a similar traumatic experience that's mm. my guess where she where she is seeing what is uh, like unfolding for or Rumi isn't yeah or Rumi is just another personality right like a self-care personality which would explain some of the like loop stuff that started to happen there too. right and then they just um, all started blending or something climax yeah i don't yeah, i don't the, know i, mean, I don't know how to like really yeah, the ending does not leave you with a whole bunch of clarity around what the fuck is going on. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. And 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 like I love stuff like that, right? Like I'll be thinking about this for the next like two weeks for sure. Yeah, right? Me too. Like, we'll be texting. I'll be, I'll be ruminating over it in my brain. No. <sighs> So yeah, yeah, this is gonna be one that I'm gonna take to bed for the next couple of weeks where like, it's just gonna pop up at really inconvenient times and make me obsess over what the fuck happened in this movie. I don't want anything about this film anywhere near me while I'm sleeping. <laughs> That's fair. I It's interesting because I don't, I don't know that I want to watch it again. No. But I also feel like I would need to to really analyze it more. I'm but, just yeah, gonna I, do a whole bunch of Googling. <laughs> that's fair i love the commentary on the entertainment industry i thought that was spot on and and i thought it went places like i said it went places that you know i didn't expect it to go and it went places that i've never seen similar things go yeah and especially for what 1997 wow 
I can definitely see a lot of, I don't know if Darren Aronofsky watched this movie, but he must have when he made some of the movies that he's made, because there's a lot of similar themes and imagery in, in movies like Black Swan and Requiem for a Dream. Which I know you haven't seen, and I'm not trying to spoil them, but I, I feel like it's important to call out that connection. Warming myself up to what I think I'm going to rate this. So what are you going to give it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you? I did not hate it. I was fascinated by it. I was totally compelled by all of the plot twists that I in no way saw coming. I thought those yeah. were masterfully done. And even the ones that I saw coming, I was like, you earned that. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. I check, yeah. check. I, I mean, I think that whenever... I mean, this happens frequently. Like whenever I go into a film tabula rasa, I'm always a little bit nervous that I won't know how to situate my reaction to a film in anything. <laughs> it's not that I disliked it. I mean, it's hard to watch for all of the reasons that we described, right? Yeah. And yeah. I don't think that either one of us signed up for an idea of like, ooh, horror films or the psychological thrillers are going to be like easy to watch, right? That's not that's not what we signed up for. No, it's I not. do we think did not this... sign up for even easy to watch movies. That's true. No. I do think that this film was really masterfully well done. I'm surprised by how well done it is. Do you like anime? Do you watch a lot of anime? I go through like weird little spurts. Because I have no idea yeah. how to like place it in the context of other anime either. So in my brain, I'm just sort of putting it up against everything else we've watched or anything else that I've watched in my life, right? So having a hard time lighting on a rating for it. Yeah, I'm having a hard time too. And not because I didn't in like it. I yeah, feel like no, the question of whether or not I liked ride. it is, is irrelevant. It was a really great ride. It was masterfully done. I completely agree with that. And initially it felt a little bit dated and then I completely forgot about that. because I got so yeah. sucked into the story, which is another credit to it, the production. I mean, it yeah. definitely lands for me numerically somewhere between like an eight and a nine. Yeah, that's where I was leaning to, like a high, like a high, like a mid to high eight something Maybe, like 8.6 yeah. 8 8.7 8 i put it in there yeah that's what i was too. coming around to yeah that wraps up our overseas film series for this round for this round i'm sure we'll be back although considering the technical glitches and the copyright issues i've had it might be a little while before we come back to more overseas horror Woo! Not that the well, technical glitches, not that the technical glitches are the result of specifically watching overseas horror, but the copyright issues <laughs> sure are. I think George Lucas gonna sue somebody. Well, where are we headed to next? What's, next our, what's up, our next theme? Next up is your birthday month. If you mm -hmm. want that on the internet. And you chose the theme. I chose. So I think you should say what it is. For September, Edward and I are watching folk horror yes. as our theme. And We're I gonna am have, stoked. Yeah. We're gonna have some really great ones to, to watch and rewatch. Uh, some of our favorites, some new ones. And in between this series and the next series, slasher movie surprise. So stay tuned for that. So that's what's happening. And if you like what we're doing, you wanna see more of what we're doing, you wanna support our channel, hit the subscribe button, give us a like, hit the notification bell, visit Patreon, let us know what you think, let us know what you want us to check out on this channel and react to let us know what your favorite horror movies are what are your what are some of your favorite folk horror movies yeah uh, tell us in the comments and uh we will see you next time next week next week next time next week thank you so much for joining us y'all we really appreciate it as always see you soon see you soon <laughs>